In June 1606, England's new king, James I, granted a charter to the Virginia Company. You may start a colony in the Chesapeake Bay area. You will have the same rights as English subjects. The colonists were excited to go. They believed that they would find gold in Virginia. On December 20th, 1606, 105 men boarded three ships. They carried a metal box with instructions that couldn't be opened until the ships arrived in North America. Many of the men got seasick on the three-month voyage across the ocean. Finally, they spotted land off the coast of Virginia. On the beach, Captain Newport opened the sealed metal box and read the instructions. They must take great care not to offend the North Naturals, we must choose a good settlement site from attack. We must search for gold. We must look for the northwest passage to Asia. We must look for survivors of the lost colony. The government council will be Christopher Newport, John Smith, Ratcliffe, and Wingfield. We should sail up this river to find a safe place for our settlement. We want to be hidden from the Spanish ships. We will name this river James in honor of our king. They loaded up the ship again to search for the perfect place to live. Along the way, they made a number of powder and groups. Some of these meetings were friendly, others were tense. In May, they finally chose a place on a peninsula. They called it Jamestown uh, in honor of King James. The colonists got to work clearing the land. They cut down the trees to build the fort, but what they didn't realize was that they were being watched by the Powhatan Indians. The peninsula was on their land. The settlers soon finished building Fort James, yet their problems. The water was undrinkable. The summer was very hot. The mosquitoes carried diseases, and the soil was difficult to grow up crops on. Christopher Newport decided to sail back to England. I will take these gold rocks to England and return in a few months with more supplies. The colonists were left with only a three-month supply of food. The colonists were hungry. Many men got sick. By December 1607, only 50 colonists were still alive. Nearby, Native Americans sent gifts of food, but it was not enough to keep the colonists from going hungry. The men were not used to hard work and did not do enough chores to make a successful colony. <laughs> Diseases was another problem. Mosquitoes from a nearby swamp carried a deadly disease called malaria. People with malaria would get chills and fevers and sometimes die. I don't feel so well. Uh, uh, uh. Many men died during the early years of Jamestown. Smith decided some changes need to happen. We all must work in order to survive. But we are gentlemen. Our time will be better spent searching for gold. Smith was angry. He that will not work shall not eat. Smith set out to find the Northwest Passage to Asia. American Indians in this area did not trust the English. A Powhatan hunting group captured Smith and brought him before Chief Powhatan, a powerful Native American leader in the area. I rule this land. The white people cannot stay here. He must die. The chief's daughter, Pocahontas, heard this. She was upset. She thought that John Smith was a good man. I must stop my father from killing him. Pocahontas got down on her knees and begged the chief to let Smith go. Chief Powhatan gave in to his daughter's pleas to save John's life. Go back to your people, John Smith. Smith told him that they did not want to take his land, and then he returned to Jamestown. Back in Jamestown, the colonists were still starving. When Smith arrived, he brought food and a peace agreement. In January 1608, Captain Newport returned from England with food, guns, and another 120 settlers. 
The colonists' bad luck continued. Five days later, a fire broke out in the village. The fire destroyed most of Jamestown and their supplies. Fire! Fire! The colonists worked together to put out the fire and save what they could of Jamestown. Chief Powhatan sent food to the colony every few days. Here are some supplies to help you. With your help, we will survive the winter. Over time, the colonists rebuilt Jamestown. The settlers made Smith their present. In September 1608, another ship arrived bringing 70 new settlers, including two women, Mistress Forrest and Anne Burns. They became the first woman to live in Jamestown. The winter of 1608 to 1609 was a hungry one. The Powhatans were tired of helping the colonists. They had welcomed the English as visitors, but now the time had come for them to leave. Somehow the colonists had made it through the winter. In the fall of 1609, while out on an exhibition, John Smith's bag of gunpowder exploded. He was badly hurt in his accident. Smith had to return to England to treat his injury. He believed that the colony would have no trouble surviving. The winter that followed was the worst the colony had seen. The Powhatans often attacked the colonists that left the fort looking for food. Many colonists starved to death. They called it the starving time. John Smith had left a colony of 500. Six months later, only 60 were still alive. Times weren't all bad, though. Anne Burris and John Layden got married. It was the first wedding in Jamestown. In late spring of 1610, the few settlers were eager to leave. They packed up the few things they had and climbed aboard the ship, ready to return to England. As the ships began to sail down the James River, three more ships appeared bringing more settlers, food, and supplies. The new governor, Lord Thomas Delaware, was aboard. He ordered the colonists to turn around and go back to Jamestown. Delaware took charge of the colony. He put the new settlers to work immediately. We must try harder to get along with the Powhatans, and we all must work to survive. We also must find a way to make money other than looking for gold. Colonist John Rolfe had an idea. If we plant these tobacco seeds from the Caribbean, we will make sweet tobacco that we can sell to England. It was a huge success. Soon many settlers were planting tobacco. It became their cash crop and helped the colony make money. For the first time, the colonists were working hard. The people in England loved the new tobacco. Jamestown had a future. Relations between the English and the Powhatan had grown very tense. In April of 1613, the English captured Pocahontas. They wanted to trade Chief Powhatan's daughter for English prisoners, but Powhatan refused to trade. Pocahontas remained a prisoner. While with the English, she learned about their manners and religion. One of her teachers was John Rolfe. Rolfe and Pocahontas fell in love. In April 1614, they were married. Their marriage brought peace between the English and the Palatine. Maybe the colony would make it after all. <laughs>